Hi everyone, this is Shantae. I'm here with my analysis today. I'm a little early today because it's DNC week and I wanna catch all the speeches at the DNC, but I will come back with a short, 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 short video, not too long on just like a fast minute reaction of the DNC. Um, so I'm just here with some coronavirus numbers as I do my due diligence with coronavirus every time. So here we go. As of August 19, 2020, for the coronavirus, globally, we are at 22,252,446 cases of COVID-19 across the 88 countries around the world, including the, U the USA. Um, the death toll here is 783,825. So that's where we are. Here in the U.S., we do account for a fourth of those cases. So we are at... 5,523,826. So again, that is 5,523,826. Um, our death toll is at 172,945. And this is all according to the John Hopkins website. So you can find this. This is public knowledge for you guys. The top countries with the most cases. So Brazil has 3 million 407,354, followed by India at 2,767,273, followed by Russia at 935,066, South Africa 596,060, Peru 549,321, Mexico 531,239, Colombia 489,122, and Chile. 390,037. Now, countries with not as high cases. So with Ecuador, we have 104,475. Dominican Republic, 88,127. Panama, 82,790. Guatemala, 600 and, no, excuse me, not 600, 64,881. Honduras, 51,670, and El Salvador, 23,717. I am watching her tonight, so that's why I'm doing this a lot earlier because I will have a short snippet video probably afterwards. So that's why I'm doing this stuff earlier. Um, Nigeria is at 50,488, Ghana, 43,094. Kenya, 31,015. Cameroon, 18,624. Senegal, 12,446. And Gambia, 2,288. In Haiti, we have 7,949. Um, in Bahamas, 1,424. Jamaica, 1,146. Guyana, 776. Trinidad and Tobago, 650. Belize, 553. Barbados, 155. Antigua, 94. St. Vincent, 58. St. Lucia, 26. Grenada, 24. Dominica, 18. St. Kitts, 17. Now here at home, according to the New York Times map, California at 60, um, 641,000. 610 Florida 584,039 Texas 578,044 New York which was the epicenter of all of this is now at 431,924 Georgia 224,681 Illinois 230 no 213,680 Arizona 195 561, New Jersey, 190,256. Hey, Tasha. North Carolina, 148,181. And Louisiana, 140,044. Um, in these counties, you know, Los Angeles is the highest at 224,105. Miami-Dade County is at 146,990. Maricopa in Arizona, 129,589. Cook County in Chicago, 
of 117,171. Harris County in Houston, 93,817. No, 93,872, excuse me. Queens, which was once the big crazy, the top with the most counties is now at 68,596. And Broward County in Florida, 67,193. And as I said, we have no plan, none. No actual plan to combat COVID-19. Um, there's no coordinated strategy. There's nothing. Um, states are basically on their own. Governors are acting like presidents. And I say this every day because I can't imagine living in a country and our leadership takes no responsibility. Not at all. And this is bad. So Trump had a press conference. I didn't really watch a whole bunch of it because it's nothing but a manifesto of lies. He went on to say something about, you know, dismantling and basically restoring, excuse me, restoring um, the virtual and all the suspend, suspended, I mean, excuse me, virtually um, suspend the U.S. sanctions on Iran. He also criticized the Iran deal from the Obama administration. He also claims it was a total disaster. And to keep in mind that the Iran deal was to prevent the Iranians not to use their nuclear weapons on us or our allies. Yeah. He also criticized New Zealand for um, pretty much um, saying they had a big outbreak because he's mad because they actually reported over 100 and something no, they reported less cases in their their um, country. Um, he said the mortality rate in Europe is 30% higher than the U.S. Maybe people are getting it, dying. But, of course, we top the highest death toll. And behind us is Brazil, then Mexico. Europe is not even in, in, in close range with us. Also, when he was asked about the Kiran, I don't know what they are. I think I'm going to do my research on these crazy. They like the tea party times too. Hey, Jan. Um, he um, responded and said, these people like me very much. I don't know my, much of their movement, but they like me very much. So he's just worried about people liking him and not what people stand for. Like the RNC is next, is next week. He's inviting these um, people who pull... The couple that pulled, excuse me, the couple that pulled the guns on protesters in Missouri, I think it's St. Louis, Missouri, he is inviting them to the RNC. So we already know the platform of the Republican Party. I mean, honestly, to tell you the truth, the Republican Party has not been for the people since probably Lincoln. Or Grant, because I don't remember any of the re the Republicans, especially up north. Because I'm from up north, I don't remember them being for the people. Maybe the Southern Republicans were for the people, but not the Northern Republicans. I, no, not that I know of. You, I, I only could remember the Rockefellers, because some of them were Republicans. And one was a liberal Republican. And you hardly, you, you don't even know what a liberal Republican is because he's the last liberal Republican, which was Nelson Rockefeller, who was the then governor of New York way back over 50 something years ago. And he was the vice president under Ford, Gerald Ford. So the Republicans haven't really been for the people since. I can't even say which president because I don't think Gerald Ford was for the people. I don't think um, Eisenhower was really too much for the people. He did some stuff, but it wasn't still enough. And we know Nixon, he was all right, but he wasn't still for the people. He was for self-power. And we know goddamn no Reagan was not for the, We all know about Reagan. Okay. So, they haven't really lived up for the people since. So, I'm not shocked 
that they bring in extreme races. I didn't know they were very openly to do that. But now that I know, I mean, they embraced Stephen King for crying out loud, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, we know where the Republicans stand. And we know that they're going to do everything to suppress the vote. That's why it's important that we vote. That's why it's important that we stay engaged, stay informed. You don't have to be like a political junkie like me that live off this stuff like in my vein vessel or the business stuff in my vein vessel because I got business and politics in my blood because I was a business major. I have a degree in business and I work in nonprofit, but I still work on the business side of nonprofit with all compliance and everything. So there's stuff that I know. But as I said, we must engage, mobilize, organize, and vote. If we don't vote, and I'm talking to the young progressives under 30, and even some under 35, remember, when you don't vote, you're voting against $15 minimum wage. The Supreme Court, Medicare, climate change, racial equality to improve it, marriage equality, abortion rights, women's rights, reproductive rights within that. Equal pay. Criminal justice reform. Anti-gun laws, especially on um, assault banned weapons. Remember, this election is important. Every election is important, but this particular, particular election is important. And I hope but this election, you keep voting, even for small and local offices. Keep voting because your voice, it matters. And as long as you are engaged and stay abreast, you will realize that the government will work for you. So keep that in mind. Until then, have a good night. Enjoy the DNC. And for those who are on Twitter, I'll be watching another live before I do this. Okay? So take care.